comments. This is what I live for. Okay, with the up and coming prospects of Comet Atlas 2019 Y4, I'm getting ready. But what are we gonna see? What's it gonna look like? How's it gonna be at our skies? Well, here at my latitude, 37 degrees, about 2,400 meters up or almost 7,500 feet, I've used Sky Safari to go ahead and take a look and find out how it's going to appear over the next few months and into perihelion. A couple of things about this comet. Uh, right now it's in the constellation Ursa Major and it's brighter than it's supposed to be. Um, again, perihelion date is May 35th, 31st, and it's got a period of about 5,500 years according to Sky Safari. And you're gonna see in a moment that that's not correct. All right, currently, or around March right now, uh, into March, it is a circumpolar object. And that means it's gonna stick around, it doesn't really set, and here it is moving, oh, meridian line. It, it's moving quite quickly, uh, not abnormally fast as far as comets are concerned. But you're gonna notice throughout the night, 11, 12, one in the morning, it's not setting, and then a little after five, we've got twilight occurring. So that's where it's at right now. And it shows a good place for it. All right, let's go ahead and move this thing day by day. And let's find out where it goes. Okay, it's moving out of Ursa Major. Might be crossing the border of Lynx into Camelopardalus. And to the right, also in Camelopardalus, is a nifty comet I've been following since November-ish of 2019. It's 2017 T2 Pan Stars. I'm gonna show you a picture that I've grabbed in a, in a small video in a moment. Uh, this thing is about a little bit less than two AU's astronomical units away from us. Um, it's supposed to be at its brightest on May 4th and uh, might be quite a view to see both of them in the same field at about this date. That's April 19th. Here's a quick video of the last shooting I got. I, I did put the pictures together in February. Uh, I think it's the 20th of this year. All right, let's go day by day and keep watching Atlas Y4 move. Camelopardalus, get lower in the evening sky and probably too low into Perseus. All right, now I've got the Trinity Alps, Alps here, so we're, let's go ahead and take those and turn those off. And you'll notice the sun is, well, is below the horizon and the comet right now is about five degrees, in between five and 10 degrees in the constellation of Perseus. So that's the evening sky. Let's find out what it looks like at the same time of the year, May 20th, in the morning sky. We've lost it in the evening sky. Let's look at it in the morning sky. And just as we lose it in the evening sky, as the sun rises in the morning, I know it looks like it's going the wrong way, you can find Comet Atlas Y4 is a morning object, yes. Again, the sun's not very low and there's heavy twilight, but it's still a good representation. You can see the sun to the bottom right and there's the comet upper left. And let's go ahead and uh, run this day by day. So May 24th, six days, seven days before perihelion. Sun's cooking it up. Let's go step by step. Once again in the constellation of Perseus. Trying to set up to where it's moderately dark. Again, this is only between five and 10 degrees off the horizon. You're gonna have to need a good horizon. Hey, there's the Pleiades right there. And there it is on perihelion. Closest approach to the sun inside the orbit of Mercury. Ah, here we go. And notice, over in the evening sky, it's well below the horizon. In fact, on the 31st, June, 
we're moving it at no time and in the evening sky does it rise. So at no time will we get a chance in the evening. So all, it's an all morning object. Even in the Southern Hemisphere, it's a, it's a morning object. So let's go back. Here's perihelion again. And let's watch it move through the course. At the very best, it's hanging and, and the tail should be pointing towards the west. This is the fifth, the last chance we even get a chance of seeing it. Uh, you might be able to see it during the daylight. We'll, see, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, I'm going forward and notice in July, in the morning sky, it does come up again. But we still should have some great opportunities to watch this thing fade away. We don't know how bright it's gonna be when it hits perihelion, and we don't know how long it's gonna last. Um, but I do want to look at the Great Comet of 1844 in a future episode and take a look and compare it to this comet because it's quite similar. By the way, here is the orbital diagram from JPL, and it's showing, you can take, take a look at the bottom left-hand corner, the dates and the times, and here it is, right May 31st, right there, and it shows the comet whipping down below the equatorial plane of our solar system. So this shows that down below, for the people in the Southern Hemisphere, let's switch it over to the Southern Hemisphere in Sky Safari, we should be able to see it pretty neat. Again, the sun is not very low below the horizon, it hasn't risen yet in the morning sky. And there it is. Could be spectacular around. And we don't know how bright the tail's gonna be. It could be 10 degrees like the comet of 1844, the great one or it could be 20, 30 degrees. It's just, we don't know. Maybe even the nucleus will dissipate. And if that's the case, we might have, who knows, a spectacular object out there. So take a look, we're into June, July. You can see the comet is getting ever so higher away from the sun in the morning for the Southern Hemisphere. And we know about this point in time, it's also becomes visible for us back in the Northern Hemisphere. But are you ready? I am. This is a great comet that I saw back in 2018, this is September. And this is comet geokabini zinner uh, periodic comet 21, P21. And this was not supposed to be a great comet, but take a look at this. Great tail, good colors. Again, are you ready? So I'm certainly ready. I'm gonna put up my Rasa 8, my Rasa 11. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing. I might even have to go with a, a Red Cat 51 and uh, it might be a wide-filled object, and it might even fizzle out. But the up-and-coming months should prove what's going on. Right now it is brighter than expected. It's a circumpolar object, and it will continue that way up until the beginning of May. Well, let's watch what this box of chocolate will give us as it heads towards its closest approach, nearing the sun inside Mercury's orbit on perihelion day, May 31st.